You were telling me that Roger Baldwin hired you at the ACLU when you were just 19. I remember another conversation where you said that in those days he ran the ACLU as his own personal pet project. Well, after he had been there just a very short time at, with me as his secretary, he came into my uh, office, which was not my office, it was me and three other girls into a space about this big. And uh, he said, I'm starting tomorrow on my yearly trip around the country to see how the various people who are interested in civil liberties um, are doing. And he soon made it clear that he did not like the idea of anybody but him doing anything organized about civil liberties. He wanted to be the big cheese, and he didn't want to have the idea of a state affiliate, which is what was later developed, was poison to him. Because he knew quite rightly, he was no stup there was no stupido, that once you had a state affiliate, and you had secretaries, and you had a typist to get them all together, that, that the person in that state who was supposed to be the head of that state was nowhere, and, uh, which is exactly what happened. Uh, well, so that's it. So, but there were eventually state affiliates. What? Eventually there were state affiliates because you headed one of those state affiliates. Uh, uh, yes and no. There were a couple of places that were older than the ACLU itself. They formed themselves into an independent group. And they were very good. And they had secretaries and they had... They just didn't have any formal rec re uh, recognition. But in those few places, they ran things because they knew how. Uh, and Roger was deathly afraid that people like that would take over the ACNU and take his value away, which is exactly what happened too. Uh, and. Uh, he was very unhappy about it. And he was so unhappy about it, he began making speeches about it, which was his big mistake, because these other folks said, this man is 65, which in those days uh, was a very old age, not like today. Uh, and uh, people pointed that out to him, and he paid no attention to it, so they got the board of directors, all of whom were young people, and they fired him. And they gave him a big party and a, a you know a plaque uh -huh. and whatever you do when you want to get rid of somebody, yeah. but you don't, you have no, you have no chance of firing them. Like he was the founder of the ACLU, they would never fire him, but they did get him to retire. They took away all of his privileges and uh, opinions, and he, uh, they told him they would give him a great big thing, uh, party, the press would be there, and uh, he finally got the point that he was being fired, which he was, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the way it ended. His wife, Evie, never heard of a lipstick or an eyebrow pencil or anything like that. She was as she was. But she was a wonderful person, very charming and sweet. And she was interested in nature. And you went on a walk with her, she could name every tree and every mosquito and every this, that, and the other thing in a very amusing and educated way. I really liked it. Uh, and I liked Roger too. He liked me. He had the hearts for me. And uh, 
last time we had a meeting, uh, I said you were very suspect uh, in your attitude toward me, but uh, if you want me to, I'll get out a statement that you never laid a finger on me, even no matter what you wanted. And I was laughing. And he said, don't laugh. If you had only helped me, we could have had a nice time together. <laughs> and then he laughed again. He said, no, we couldn't. He said, I, I may not be a very moral person, but I was founded and determined that I wasn't going to lay a finger on a 20-year-old schoolgirl. So I was relieved by that.